welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia and today I am so excited because it marks the beginning of the ice dancing at the Olympics. I always look forward to this event, but for many there can be some confusion about what ice dancing is and what exactly is being judged during each of the programs. Unlike men's, women's, and pair skating, we don't have a short and a long program. Instead, we have a slightly shorter rhythm dance program and a slightly longer free dance program. So before the competitors get started in Beijing today, I'm gonna to try to help shed some light for you on what exactly the ice dancers are trying to achieve out on the ice. Now I have a whole video about the history of ice dance, which I think you might find illuminating. So I will post a link to that video in the description down below so you can check that out, learn a bit more of ice dance history, and that'll also clue you in a bit to what's going on during the ice dancing events this weekend. Now, there are two couples events in figure skating at the Olympics. Both of them feature a man and a woman skating together on the ice to music, but that's about where the similarities between pairs and dance end. Beyond that, we have quite a few differences. Pair skating, you're gonna be seeing overhead lifts, throw jumps where the man assists the woman into a large thrown jump. You'll see side-by-side -side spins, side-by-side -side jumps, pair spins together. Basically what the pair skating is, is men's and women's event elements. So you have like axles and sow cows and sit spins, but done in unison together as a pair team. So that is basically pair skating in a nutshell. I could go into it a lot more, but that is pair skating in a nutshell. With ice dancing, rather than focusing on the big jumps, lifts, and spins, the teams are focusing on rhythm, a dance rhythm and footwork within that rhythm. So it has much more of a ballroom on ice feel. In fact, that's really where it stemmed from, is skaters trying to create a ballroom experience out on the ice. So you're gonna have very ballroom holes. You're gonna see them skating together in a hold that looks like they're ballroom dancing, and that focuses on that rhythm, that timing, that footwork within that dance rhythm. You will see some jumps, but they will all be half rotation jumps or less. They're added to the choreography for extra artistry and flair, but there are no full rotation jumps as there are in pair skating. Lifts are restricted, so you can't, you will see some ice dancing lifts, but the man is not allowed to lift his hands over his head. So none of those lifts are gonna be big overhead lifts like we see in pair skating. Instead, ice dancing lifts are more about creating interesting shapes and balances between the weight of the partner. So you're gonna see some very interesting, unique, intricate lifts that are more artistic rather than those big, strong power lifting moves that we see in pair skating. Partners are almost always physically connected. That is one of the key things that you're gonna see with ice dance. They skate in very close proximity to each other, usually in some kind of a dance hold. They will separate for a footwork sequence, but they have to be within two arms length of each other. So once that footwork sequence is over, they're gonna link right back up to continue their program. So think of timing, precision, rhythm, and footwork being the main focuses of an ice dance routine. And that is ice dance in a nutshell. Again, I could go into much more detail, but that is a basic nutshell synopsis of what ice dancing is. The free dance, as the name implies, gives those couples a lot of room for creativity and freedom out on the ice. They get to choose their music style, the music rhythm, the music tempo. So they're still needing to stay within that ballroom dancing kind of feel, but they're gonna have a lot of room for expression in the free dance. So you're gonna see a lot of creativity and originality while still trying to maintain rhythm, timing, footwork, and tempo. Skating skills are paramount. Of course, we wanna see clean skating skills, but originality and freedom is the name of the day for the free dance. For rhythm dance, the ISU, the International Skating Union, will announce the rules at the beginning of each season. So every year, those rules will change. Now, when I say rules, I'm talking about the basic ideas of what's gonna go into their program. So the ISU is going to say, 
this year all of the music has to be chosen from a musical or an operetta as was the case for the last two seasons so 2019 to 20 and then 2020 to 2021 all rhythm dance music had to be chosen from a musical or an operetta so when i say rules it's within a theme they're trying to give a theme that all of the skaters are going to express themselves within it might be a specific tempo so the isu might say it needs to be 120 beats per minute um, they might give out a specific dance so they might say it has to be a westminster waltz or something like that. There's a ton of different structured dances that ice dancers have had to learn over their career. First one that they learn is called the Dutch Waltz. They're gonna learn the Canasta Tango, the Rhythm Blues. So there's all these specific structured dances that ice dancers learn. And so the ISU is gonna pick one of those structured dances and that is gonna to have to be included in the rhythm dance portion for that season. For the 2021, 2022 season that we're going to be seeing competed at the Olympics today, those requirements are as follows. Couples must dance a pattern called Midnight Blues. This is one of those specific structured dances that all dancers will have learned in the past. So a portion of each performance must include this exact same Midnight Blues dance pattern. Music must be between 86 and 96 beats per minute. There has to be a step sequence that uses the Midnight Blues rhythm. Program must include at least one short lift that lasts up to seven seconds. Program must include one step sequence that uses a different rhythm than the Midnight Blues. The program must also include one set of twizzles. Music must be two minutes and 50 seconds, give or take about 10 seconds. Even with all these requirements and the similarities you're gonna see in the choreography, every ice dancing team has a different style. You're gonna see all different taste and music coming out. So the music is gonna be quite varied. And because of this, the expression of that midnight blues dance is gonna range all over the board with each different couple. And I think that this makes the rhythm dance a really fascinating exercise to watch. You're seeing all these couples dancing essentially the same dance, but expressing it in a completely different way. And I think that's kind of fascinating. And it also allows the judges to kind of score on a one-to-one -one basis. They're seeing one person's rhythm blues versus another person's rhythm blues, and they can score across the board with that ice dance. So I hope you enjoy that rhythm dance tonight and of course the free dance tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to hearing all of your thoughts and reactions after seeing the ice dance events this weekend. So make sure you post a comment below so I can chat with you about that ice dancing. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please do give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down in the corner so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.